Well, five months ago, the Bow River washed over the Calgary Zoo, especially St. George's Island. This is how it looked in the days after the water receded. We all remember these images, mud, debris everywhere, exhibits damage, a huge, huge mess left behind to clean up. Well, since the flood, only one exhibit, the Penguin Plunge, has been open to the public. That all changes later this morning. David Boucher joining us now with more on the big <laughs> reopening of the Calgary <laughs> Zoo. What's up, Barney? Well, actually, it's not Barney, it's uh, Rex. Oh, uh, thanks. Initial Sorry. T Rex, that is. <laughs> yes, we're having some fun here at the Calgary Zoo. <laughs> Five months after that devastating flood, uh, the zoo is finally reopening fully to the public, and that happens at 10.30. The public is welcome. Now, joining me now to talk about the educational component of the Calgary Zoo is Laura Glick. Uh, Laura, thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me, Mr. Rex. Well, wow, that's T-Rex. Anyway, uh, the, the flood is part of what you're doing now. Uh, tell me about uh, the, that educational part of this. Once we reopened at the end of July, we had a lot of questions from kids and adults about what was happening with the animals, the updates. So it was a great opportunity for us to talk about animal care, animal husbandry, animal welfare, and the different responsibilities that the keepers and the rest of the zoo have in caring for our animals. It's not just simply providing the food and cleaning up after them. We do have to prepare for events such as this and, and other positive things such as births at the zoo. So it was a great starting point for a lot of conversations. And since the flood, you've been taking that message and all that information off-site, haven't you? Yes, we do corporate team builders on-site as one of our regular programs, and we actually had a lot of interest from the corporate world here in Calgary to talk about the flood and, and what was going on and what they could do to get involved. So we developed an off-site speakers bureau, went to a number of different places here in town, and shared with them the story and, and the positive sides as well. All the unique things that came out, the, the learning that came out of this experience, and what's next, where we're going to go from here. And you also talk about animals on an ongoing basis, uh, education, uh, people can learn about animals, even extinct ones, right? Correct, and you're actually from the Dinos Alive sleepover, so we have uh, sleepovers that happen at the zoo for family groups, we do behind the scenes, breakfast programs, all these are programs that are going to be able to get back up and started. So we're excited to have folks down, we're going to renew spring and summer camp next year, and we'll also keep doing the on-grounds programming that daily visitors can come in and learn about the plants and animals and birds. Well, I'm really excited about a sleepover. I'm looking forward to that. Laura Glick, thank you very much for joining us so early, and congratulations on the grand reopening. Thank you. Okay, and that happens at uh, 1030. Uh, <laughs> this is T-Rex, over and out. I never would have thought you'd need a name tag uh, with uh, that, that look. But apparently, Mr. T, they're having issues. Who's having issues? Well, between me calling you <laughs> Barney and poor... Uh, Zoo officials calling you, uh, um, uh, what did she Rex? call you? Did she call you Rex? <laughs> yeah, initial T, that is. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, T, T Rex. <laughs> right. Thanks so much, Mr. T. Okay, Rex. we'll see you in half an hour. Cheers. Rah.